Perhaps one of the more popular trends over the last few years with regards to both photography and videography is really this desire to create a more cinematic look. Now, what constitutes the cinematic look? Well, that's definitely up for debate. And there's certainly a multitude of different ways to, uh, to create this look. And in this week's video, I wanna share with you a few different ways that I found to apply kind of a cinematic technique to my landscape photos using Lightroom. Now, you don't have to use Lightroom for this. All of this information can really be applied in, in any post-processing system. So whatever post-processing software you're most comfortable with you, or you prefer, you can definitely do this in as well. So what exactly is the cinematic look? If you actually look it up online, let's type in a cinematic photography and select images and just kind of look through here and just kind of spend a minute just looking through at the different images on this page and kind of like what are the common traits that many of these images share. And the first things that really jump out to me is they're almost all underexposed. Some of them definitely more than others, but they all have a little bit um, kind of a darker, more moody or dramatic look to them. They all seem to have a kind of cool or color temperature to them. Many of them have either a blue tint or maybe kind of a, a green tint to the overall photograph. And they almost all have a kind of more subdued, more muted, desaturated kind of color palette associated with them. And those are really the kind of the qualities that jump out to me, whether I'm watching a, a movie that's a real cinematic look to it, or maybe I'm just looking at an image that has kind of a cinematic edit applied to it. Those are kind of the, the general traits or the common characteristics that usually kind of jump out at me. So exactly how do you apply this technique to your photos? So here's a, a few different examples right here and kind of go through them real quick. This image right here is definitely the original. This is the, uh, the edited version. And then you had these two right here from, uh, from Moab. Let me pull this up. This is the image straight out of camera and this has a little bit of a different cinematic edit to it. And then we have this one right here from the Oregon coast where this is the image straight out of camera. And then here is one kind of really playing on the whole teal and orange color palette. Those are kind of seem to be the, the, the real popular kind of color combination for cinema is teal and orange. So some images I think that works well on and some images I don't think it, it works the best on. But those are kind of three examples. So to uh, kind of jump right into this very first one and compare these two. So for this situation right here, I, I like the photograph, but it was just missing something. This image originally just felt kind of like a snapshot. And I like to apply a cinematic uh, edit to images that I'm kind of struggling with. So an image that just kind of looks good, but it doesn't look great. Sometimes I'll play around with kind of a, a more heavy handed edit to add maybe a little bit more mood or more drama to the actual uh, photograph, just to kind of see if it'll kind of take it from that good photo to a great photo. And I found that a kind of a cinematic uh, technique is a great way to do that. Now I do want to preface this video real quick just by saying that I don't think there is a right or a wrong way to apply this uh, look to your photos. If you like the way it looks to your photos, and I think that's the right way to do it. So to jump right into it, the very first thing that I always do, let me come up here to the original, we'll go to the develop module, is I always start at the very top and just kind of work my way down. So we'll start with the actual color temperature and the white balance. So I think I'm going to, let's just hit auto to see what Lightroom suggests. And Lightroom definitely warmed it up a bit and I definitely don't want to warm it up. I want to cool it down. So I'm going to bring this down some to I think maybe about not quite that much. Maybe right around there, maybe it's a little bit less. I think that looks good about there. We'll bring the tint over to the green. Just kind of tint it a little bit more greens. Maybe about right there, I think looks good. Definitely want to bring the exposure down quite a bit. And then the contrast. I'm going to bring the contrast down. And I find that bringing the contrast down is a great way to kind of just soften the image a little bit. I don't want to suck all the contrast out of the overall photograph, but uh, applying negative contrast in the global section, depending on the overall photograph, is a, is a great way to just kind of soften the image a little bit. And then as far as the highlights and the shadows go, I typically just kind of edit these just like I normally would on any other photograph. I really like the, the highlights hitting these trees here. So I'm, just, I'm going to bring the highlights up some. I'm also going to bring the shadows up a little bit and then the whites and the blacks. I think I'm going to 
I think I'm gonna bring the whites all the way down and the blacks, I'm gonna bring the blacks up. And this is a technique that you might have heard before called fade the blacks. And it's another way of just kind of softening the overall photographs just a little bit to kind of create that kind of more, uh, I guess, painterly look or ethereal look to it, just to kind of get away from that uh, digital look a little bit. I'm gonna come down here to the texture and the clarity section. And this is a great area to, you know, once again, just try and soften the overall photograph to kind of just get away from just uh, that super, I guess, sharp photo or the digital look because for me the cinematic look is very synonymous with the film look as well and that's kind of just has a little bit of a softer look too and i found negative texture and negative clarity is a great way to do that so i'm going to come up here to the texture slider we'll bring it down to maybe about there bring the clarity down maybe around there looks good as well and then the dehaze slider. So generally dehaze is great for removing haze from an image, but if you actually use negative dehaze, it's also a good way to add a little bit of kind of haze or fog a little bit, or just maybe add just a little bit of a, I guess, uh, a little bit of kind of a atmosphere. That's the word. It took me a while to figure out what I was talking about, but the actual atmosphere, using negative dehaze is a great way to add just a little bit of softening, a little bit of atmosphere to a photograph. And then vibrance. So I'm gonna bring the vibrance up a little bit on this image, maybe about there, and then bring the saturation down quite a bit as well. So I think that looks good. So we've definitely desaturated this image. I'm gonna come down to the, uh, yeah, the tone curve, I think, and we'll add just a little bit of contrast back in using the tone curve. I'm gonna add three anchor points. We'll reduce the mid-tones a little bit. We'll bring up the highlights just a touch. Maybe bring this down just a little bit more. Toggle this on and off. So this is off and this is on. So I think that looks good right there. And now we're gonna come down to the HSL section. And this is a really important section for this look where you really wanna manipulate the hues and the saturation and the luminance values of specific color channels. So I'm going to come up to the hues. I think I'm going to take the yellows and we're going to, uh, let's see, I think I shift the yellows a little bit more towards orange and you kind of make those leaves on the tree just kind of pop out a little bit more just to give the image a little bit more depth. So I think I'm gonna take this to be minus 59-ish, 60, somewhere right around there. And then the greens, I'm gonna definitely bring that down. I don't want the greens to look like that. I want them to look a little bit more orange orange-ish, I should say. Maybe around right here looks good. And then the saturations. And also, pay you wanna pay attention to the yellows and the greens and the blues. At least those are the color channels that I pay attention to the most when it comes to kind of applying a, any kind of like a cinematic edit. So the yellows and the greens and the blues. So I'm gonna come down to the saturation section and I'm gonna desaturate the yellows. And I'm going to do the same thing to the greens. And let's see, I think that looks good. And then the luminance. I think I'm gonna increase the luminance on the greens quite a bit, actually. Do I wanna do anything with the yellows? Oops, I grabbed the wrong one. Uh, let's see, the yellows. I don't think so, I think I'm gonna leave the yellows alone. I think I'm gonna leave it right there. Let's toggle this entire section on and off. So this is off and this is on. So we're definitely desaturating a lot of the yellows and the greens in this overall photograph and all the colors in general. And it's really starting to, to kind of move away from that just kind of quote unquote snapshot look to a little bit more kind of a cinematic feel. I'm gonna come down here to split toning. Now, if you're not familiar with, with uh, what split toning is, it's an absolutely fantastic tool within Lightroom. It gives you the ability to tone the highlights and tone the shadows a different color or the same color. So I'm gonna come up here to the highlights and I'm going to pick a warm color. First, let me just start with this one. Uh, I think something a little bit more yellow will look good. So maybe something over in this region, I think. I think that looks pretty good right there. And then for the shadows, I will usually use this kind of default uh, color right here that Lightroom has for the actual shadows. 
just to kind of cool them down. And we'll toggle this on and off. So this is before the actual split toning is applied. And then this is after the split toning. So it's a very subtle difference, but it, it is definitely there. Now I'm going to come over here to the calibration section. And what do I want to do here? I definitely want to tint the shadows more green. And I'm going to come down here to, I think the red primary channel. And I, ooh, I like the way that looks actually. Uh, yep, I think I'm gonna bring it all the way to plus 100. because I really wanna kind of make these leaves up here kind of stand out from the rest of the photograph. And I'm gonna take the, I think the green primary and shift this over to the left a little bit. And I'm also going to do the same thing with the blue as well, maybe to about right there. And the camera calibration section is another great way to manipulate colors. It gives you a, a, a kind of more refined way to identify some very specific channels and shifting the hues to each of those channels or the actual overall saturation of those channels. It's even a little bit more robust or more powerful way than the HSL section. But uh, let me toggle this effect on and off as well. So this is before and this is after. So you can really see the difference now between the blue and the shadows, whoops, the blue and the shadows and the, uh, the kind of orange color in the leaves. So now I'm gonna come over here to the effects panel. I'm gonna add a slight vignette to this photograph, I think. I'm gonna add a little bit of grain because I think grain is synonymous with that cinematic film look as well. Not a ton of grain, but just a little bit. And I think I'm gonna add a grad filter along the bottom here. A lot of times I like to do that because that kind of adds a little bit of lead in depth to the overall photograph. So just darkening down kind of the bottom area. So I'm gonna come up here to grad filter, hit new, leave this on exposure. And just holding down the shift key while I drag this up will automatically keep it straight. Uh, maybe a little bit higher. I hit the shortcut key O to see what area is being impacted. I think that looks good. And it will bring down the overall exposure of this area to eh, maybe about right there. Maybe not quite that much right there. And let's toggle this kind of on and off just to see exactly what we did. So this is off and this is on. And I think overall that looks substantially better than the image straight out of camera. This definitely has quite a bit more mood, a lot more drama to the photograph. It looks a lot more interesting in my opinion. And it definitely kind of resembles an image that was kind of taken from a, uh, a, you know, a, a movie. So we'll do another one right here as well. So let me go back to the library section here. Let's, uh, let's do this one from the Oregon coast. So if you remember this right here is the, uh, the before and the after the image on the left is after the edit. This is the before straight out of camera. So we will come up here. I'm going to move through this one a little bit quick. So I don't want this video to drag on too long. We'll come up here to the, uh, the basic section. I'm going to hit auto just to see what white, uh, see what Lightroom thinks the white balance should be. And then I'm going to take the, uh, the tint. And I'm gonna, or I'm sorry, the temperature, definitely going to cool it down a little bit about right there. I think the tint, mm, what do I want to do? Maybe minus uh, maybe about right there. looks good. Add a little bit more green into the overall photograph, the exposure. I think I'm going to bring the exposure up on this one a little bit. It was already a little bit too dark. I think, I think that looks good right there. Contrast. This image is already kind of flat. I'm going to use kind of global contrast here. And then the shadow, or I'm sorry, the highlights. I'm going to bring them all the way down. The shadows, I'm going to bring them up a fair amount. And then the whites and the blacks. Um, bring the whites up. The blacks, I'm going to bring them down a little bit. About right there, I think looks good. And then as far as texture goes, I don't really see a lot of small detail. Texture is great for enhancing small size detail. Clarity is great for enhancing kind of large to medium size detail. There's not a lot of texture in this overall photograph, so I'm not gonna reduce it or increase it, but I am going to reduce the overall clarity of this image to about right there, I think. I'm not gonna do anything with dehaze. Vibrance, I'm gonna boost it up a touch. And at the same time, I'm gonna desaturate the global saturation. That looks good right about there. The tone curve, I'm gonna add in a S curve just to add some contrast to the overall photograph, bring down the 
midtones, bring up the highlights a touch. I'm gonna bring, whoops, hit Command Z. Didn't mean to add that one anchor point there. I'm kind of bring this up a little bit, kind of soften the black area a little bit, just kind of added that film look just a touch. I'm gonna bring this up just a little bit more and bring this down just a little bit more. Let's toggle this on and off. So this is before and this is after. I think I'm actually gonna bring this up just a little bit to about right there. I think that looks good. Now the HSL section. I'm gonna take the, uh, let's see, the reds. I think I'm gonna bring the reds up some. I'm gonna take the yellows, I'm sorry, the oranges. I think I'm gonna bring them down some. And then the yellows. I'm gonna bring them down to minus somewhere right around there, just kind of shifting the yellows more towards orange. Not quite that much, Mark. I think around, yeah. Somewhere right around there, I think it looks pretty good. Do I want to do anything with the greens? I do. I want to shift the greens over a little bit to about right there. And then the saturation, I definitely want to bring down the saturation of both the yellows and the greens. I usually will do a very similar value for both. Whoops, I don't think I even meant to do the, the orange there. Do I want to do that? No. Take the yellows and the greens down to around minus 30. And the blues, I don't want to do anything with the blues. There's a lot of blue in this photograph. I think I'm going to desaturate the blues quite a bit right through here. I think to about that looks good. And this image is really starting to, to kind of come together. It definitely looks a little bit more, um, um, it's, it's leaning more towards that cinema look. It's definitely got a much more muted color palette associated to it. And it's definitely a cooler uh, image now than it was when it originally started. Now for the actual luminance i think i'm going to bring the the reds up a little bit i'm kind of looking at the the roof of the the lighthouse in the background i'm going to bring the luminance value up some i think to about maybe right there looks good and then the oranges you know once again i'm looking at the roof i'm going to bring that up quite a bit to about right there and then the greens as well i'm going to give that a little bump i think that looks good do i want to do anything with no, I think that was good where we had it originally. It's around, I think that looks good. And let's toggle this on and off. So this is before and after, before and after. So a very subtle difference, but it's definitely there. So now I'm gonna come down here to the HS, or from the HSL section to split toning. We'll put a very similar color treatment that we did on the original, or the first photo. So we're gonna come down here, pick a warm color maybe something around right here. Does that look good? Uh, I think that looks good right about there. Uh, do we want to saturate it anymore? I think that's, I think that's enough right there. And then once again, we'll pick that same soft blue color for the shadows. Let's toggle this on and off. So this is off and on, off, and on. Now I'm going to come down to the camera calibration section. We will add a little bit of green into the shadows. Not much. We will also take the red hue. Kind of bring that all the way up, I think. And I'm also going to take the saturation of the reds. Kind of bring that up quite a bit as well. And the greens. Something about that looks fine to me. Also, I'm going to bring the saturation up on the overall green primary channel just a touch as well. And then the blue primary, the hue, ooh, I liked what that did. So I'm going to bring that down. We'll really play off the whole orange and teal look. And then the blue saturation, kind of bump that up quite a bit as well. I really like the way that overall kind of the blue primary slider really made a significant change to this overall photograph and i really like what that did if we toggle this entire section on and off this is off and this is on this is off and this is on so that made a world of difference for this overall photograph and you can really start to feel it coming together now i'm going to come up to the effects section and i want to add a vignette to this one i'm going to do a stronger vignette but i want to feather it a little bit just so that transition is a little bit softer Let's add a little bit of grain to the photo. 
And I think that looks pretty good right there. Let's uh, I'm kind of bring the shadows up just a little bit, I think, to about right there. Maybe reduce the contrast just a touch. But yeah, overall, I think that that is pretty much done. And I definitely like the way that this looks substantially more than the original image straight out of camera. So those are kind of the techniques that I use to kind of create this cinematic look for any of my landscape photos. And it's definitely something that depends on the individual image. You'll notice that the edit we put on the second image is a completely different edit than we put on the first image, but it all kind of goes through the same exact framework or, or workflow. So, and if you saw any tips or if you have any tips or any kind of techniques that I didn't mention in this video with regards to cinematic look for your landscape photos, definitely if you could put those in the comment section below, I am always looking for ways to improve my own post processing so that'd be greatly appreciated. And I hope you enjoyed this week's video, something a little bit different. If uh, you have any questions, definitely let me know and I guarantee I will get back in touch with you. And if you enjoy this week's video, if you could hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you are not subscribed already. And as always, I really do appreciate you watching this week's video and I'll see you next week. Bye.